This week I'm talking about ants. Strictly speaking, I'm talking about uh, ant mega colonies, but we've got a little ways to go uh, before we get to that. Because you've got to start on the normal are... colonies first, right? Yeah, exactly. There are so many ants. This number that you see here, one with 15 zeros. I that... have seen this number with 16 zeros. I don't know who to trust. Is that um, trillion or quadrillion? Quadrillion. One million billion. <laughs> That's Holy a lot of ants. Shit. There's a lot of ants. Imagine all of those ants in the same place. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't even um, comprehend that, that. Like, yeah, I can't even figure out what that number is, let alone yeah. comprehend it. You see, I've played a bit of cookie picker, so that number isn't too scary for me. <laughs> okay. I love these ant so is... drawings. Oh, thank you. They're so beautiful. You'll see them again. <laughs> let us start slow with one ant. Okay? Yeah. What is an ant? An ant... Its closest relative is a wasp. So it's an insect of that specific variety. But let me digress just a second, because I've been thinking about this recently. What's an insect? Um, Here's a little family tree. Here's a little family tree. Uh, Here's Insecta. Mm -hmm. Here's Hexapoda, which contains things that used to all be referred to as insects. So they are all broadly insecty. And then here is their closest relative, Ramipedia. What's that? Which are blind venomous crustaceans. So that's cool. That's nothing like an ant. (laughs) Did you know that um, uh, if you're allergic to crustaceans, you're very likely to also be allergic to insects? Because the thing people tend to be allergic to is in the exoskeleton, and it's the same Uh. in, in... Insects so, skeletons. in the future, oh. when we're not eating beef burgers, we're eating ant burgers. Yeah. There'll be people who won't be able to have it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what they're saying, right? I don't. I don't sound like a complete idiot because I'm. I'm saying you're eating ant burgers, no, but that's what they're saying because there's so much of it. It's all pro- protein. It's protein, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I. What is it? A uh, quadrillion? A million billion? How many? <laughs> how many are there? Plenty. Uh, an edible amount for sure. Um, Squeeze them all in. Okay, we've gone from one ant. Now we're talking about lots of ants. Okay. That's like, um, what, like 30 ants? Mm, it's a colony of ants. Colonies can vary massively in size. They can live in ant hills. They can live in trees. They can live in the walls of other ant colonies. They can be very small. They can be absolutely huge. I, I beg your pardon. Um, I beg your pardon. In the walls of other <laughs> ant colonies. Oh, yeah, there's some tiny ants. Is they it like a babushka doll of walls. ants? Yeah, yeah. There's tiny ants. They live in the walls of the big ants. That's messed up. Are there are yeah. there even smaller ants that live inside the walls <laughs> no, of the colonies of the small ones? There's mites. There's mites that live on ants. So I wonder if the tiny ants have <laughs> tinier mites. Um, so yeah, even within the same species, obviously, like social behaviour varies between species. And the thing about ants is they're wildly social. Um, they're dumb on their own, but in groups, they they do a great job of doing what they do. Well, just like if you if you think of ants as like one organism, like a colony of yeah. ants as like one organism, then like exactly. if you took off bits of your body, they wouldn't work very well on their own either. But if yeah. altogether, very smart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so they can, even within the same species, you can have a tiny colony or a huge one. The slightly more interesting question, though, is what do they eat? So what do they eat? There's ants that eat other insects. Makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's ants that eat the larvae of other ants. Makes sense at all. If there's so many well. of them. Yeah. There's um, ants that, leafcutter ants, they go and they cut the cut leaves, but they don't eat the leaves. They feed the leaves to fungus and then they eat the fungus. No way. So they farm fungus. I think oh they're the my only God. I think they're the only animal other than humans to engage in farming practices. What? Wow. Yeah. No I, way. I knew about leaf cutter ants and they're the ones that you always see loads of, right? Because they're carrying yeah. big leaves around and they look yeah. really 
like pretty to watch a whole bunch of them walking along mm. all carrying leaves i had no idea they were farming fungus the whole time i thought they were just eating mm. the leaves what the hell well, to be fair you would assume that a farming ant would be wearing a straw hat <laughs> that is true. a little bit of little bit of like grass out of their mouth that definitely threw me off the lack of the the, yeah. the straw hat and mm. welly boots <laughs> Another thing ants might farm is aphids. Um, yeah. So there's some aphids that there's some ants that will protect aphids to eat the honeydew. So the aphids eat sap, they produce honeydew. The ants eat the honeydew. So they look after the aphids, which is a big problem for farmers actually, because then they crops they get destroyed by the aphids. Um, but more than that, there's even ants that keep aphids in their burrows most of the year in their colonies and then they bring them out in good weather where there's sap and then they take them back in when it's bad weather or danger around they do this mostly at <laughs> night they li- they literally they take the aphids out to pasture wow. they bring them back in and they they eat the honeydew so not produced. just agricultural farming but like animal farming as well yeah animal husbandry absolutely <laughs> incredible so i knew i knew about the eating the aphid honeydew from ant bully the movie oh, yeah. but i had no idea it was so intense <laughs> that they were actually taking care of them varies by species but yeah <laughs> so i have friends who think that the worst thing that humanity did was start farming and we should never have started farming mm. does this mean we should also hate ants as well as humanity ants make a huge difference to their environments they they're massively important in the ecosystem down to like which which kind of ant you have it makes a difference like obviously if you have an ant that's protecting the aphids that's going to make a huge difference to the wildlife um and then the final thing that i've got on this list of things that um ants eat which i'm sure is not an exhaustive list um is there is a kind of ant that exclusively eats the blood of its own children um, oh my god so what? they feed the they feed the larvae but then they just drink the blood of the larvae if so those ants are not called vampire <laughs> ants they then are called what vampire are we doing ants. They, they are, are called. indeed called vampire ants oh thank ants. god for that i would be why not? so upset if they were not called ant- vampire ants <laughs> why do they do that like because they're vampires obviously Obviously, they're vampires. Um, lots and lots of ants. The Argentine ant, and this is what we've come here to talk about today, um, originated in Argentina, where there is a fairly small ant. There's lots of um, more, the bigger, more impressive ants in Argentina, um, and it was never, it never managed to conquer, you know, particularly, and also, also lots of rivalries between different Argentine ant colonies. Um, but then the Argentine ant was, um, you know, it piggybacked on a ship to America and expanded very rapidly because its main survival strategy has been having like a really high queen to worker ratio. So it reproduces very quickly. Um, so it reproduced very quickly and formed a super colony without the same kind of competition that it had in Argentina. Right. Um, like outcompeted local species, it's an invasive species, um, with very low genetic diversity. So there are a couple of different very large colonies in America, um, one of them much bigger than the other one, and um, of, the, of the same kind of ant that are competitive. But for the most part, they're just like huge s- swathes of land are, are covered by the same super colony. How how much land are we talking here? We are talking about land on the west coast of America, f- formerly the east coast of America, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand, and Europe. Um, this wow. same colony that will fight any other colony it comes across, even of the same species. Um, but when they come into contact with each other, they've done lots of experiments. They take an ant from Europe and they take an ant from Japan and they put them in a room um, and they get along like best buds. Wow. Like they've known each other their whole lives. Like they've grown up together. Um, yeah. So this is, this is uh, the global ant 
mega the common. internet you could say <laughs> <laughs> but um, does it make sense to call it you know such a mega colony when they're not actually in communication you know they're not necessarily if they're on different continents then they're not supporting each other they're not creating a shared like ecosystem maybe they're connected by the caverns that go through the center of the earth (laughs) (laughs) i (laughs) don't know why you'd want to ruin my fun like that but also on the same (laughs) on the same continent when they so when they come across either different argentine ants or uh different local ants or other different <laughs> ants that have come from Argentina. The reason they don't really exist on the East Coast anymore is because of another import from Argentina that was bigger and stronger and also formed super colonies. Um, so it got, you know, th- there's a big battle raging <laughs> for the United States right now. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, if you think of it in terms of a massive front line against other ants, Maybe you can call it a super colony. If you consider uh-huh. the fact that no individual ant really cares about that yeah. on a global scale. That's what I care about. Then you're, then you're questioning the whole idea of ant society in the first place. Right, I mean, do ants have a here? sense of, like, genetic nationhood? Because that's what we're talking about here. No, oh yeah, no, we're projecting colonies. massively. <laughs> we're projecting massively when we talk about World War Ant, which... Is a phrase that's bandied about. World War Ant. So they're, they're not Argentine <laughs> supremacists. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But it is cool. It's cool, cool and um and invasive and you know threatening to local wildlife. It's cool, but, but it's really it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then what else did I have to say today? Lots and lots oh, and lots of ants. Oh yeah, there's more there's more ants in this super colony than there are humans on the earth. Well, um, they're a bit smaller than so us, that's aren't they? Good. <gasps> Unless they're that and size, they're... they're not that size, are they? Uh, that was <laughs> representative. <laughs> when I was looking into the carnivorous plants episode, I found um, examples of plants or like. Yeah, plants have specifically evolved to host ant colonies in them. Mm. So the ants haven't Mm. just... It's not like they've just happened to find a plant that suits them. The plant has, you know, is adapted to encourage ant colonies to settle in them and protect them from other insects and, you know, keep keep them... Yeah, like, keep them how they want their Mm. environment to be kept. I was going to talk about things that try to mimic ants. But I don't. I don't want to. But just for your viewing. What's pleasure. that? Here's a. The, the above is a picture of an ant. The below is a picture of a spider. That no. Looks oh yeah. Like the ant. There's eight of because, those legs. Because there's so many ants in the world. There's lots of opportunities. Lots of opportunists yeah. all over the world trying to pretend to be them. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> 